The visual system is specialized to take visual information, essentially photons, and compose them into a coherent picture of our world. The visual pathway begins, of course, in the eye. The world around us is represented by this arrow. These two circles represent what is seen by each eye. In fact, you can close over one eye and still see the entire arrow. And the same is true for the other eye. These are the visual fields for each eye. But how does this visual field project onto the retina? Due to the refraction at the cornea, the image is now reversed. And the same is true for the other eye. Now we have two retinal representations of the world, but how do we consolidate these two retinal images into one coherent cortical representation? As it turns out, our right visual field projects to the left side of our cortex. And our left visual field projects to the right side of the cortex. Let's put a nose on this. We can now describe the retinal fibers as either being nasal or close to the midline or temporal or lateral. And the same is true for the other eye. The nasal retina represents the temporal visual field. We now need to sort these fibers from the right visual field to the left side of the cortex and from the left visual field to the right side of the cortex. Let's do that. First, let's take these temporal fibers down the optic nerve and they're going to travel in the ipsilateral optic tract, so on the same side to the lateral geniculate nucleus. Here, they will synapse and project to the primary visual cortex. The nasal fibers from the other eye carry that same visual information. They're also going to come and travel down their optic nerve, and then they're going to cross in the optic chiasm to the contralateral or opposite optic tract, synapse in the lateral geniculate nucleus, and also project to the primary visual cortex. As you can see here in the optic tract, the fibers have been lateralized to represent the opposite visual field. Let's do the same thing for the other side of the visual field. First, let's take these temporal retinal fibers. We're going to take them down the optic nerve and down the ipsilateral optic tract, or the optic tract on the same side. They're going to synapse in the lateral geniculate nucleus and from there travel to the primary visual cortex. The nasal fibers from the other eye carry that very same visual information. The information is going to travel down the optic nerve, and again, fibers are going to cross over in the optic chiasm and then travel in the opposite optic tract to the lateral geniculate nucleus, where they will synapse and travel to the opposite primary visual cortex. Again, you can see that in this optic tract, on the right side in this case, information from the left visual field has been lateralized. Now that we've sorted out how the left and right visual fields project to their respective cortical areas, let's have a look at how the upper and lower visual field project to the cortex. So again, the world around us is represented by this arrow. This is the visual field of this particular eye. And we can see that arrow in the visual field of this eye. This is the upper visual field, and this is the lower visual field. 
due to the refraction at the cornea, the image, as it projects onto the retina, will be inverted. This inverted image on the retina projects in that same inverted way all the way to the cortex. So let's draw that in. Fibers in the upper retina contain information about the lower visual field. They'll travel along the optic nerve and the optic tract to the lateral geniculate nucleus where they will synapse. And the same is true with the fibers from the lower part of the retina. Remember, they contain information from the upper visual field. They're also going to travel down the optic nerve and the optic tract to reach the lateral geniculate nucleus. From the lateral geniculate nucleus, the fibers are going to project to the primary visual cortex. The fibers from the upper part of the retina containing information about the lower visual field will travel directly to the primary visual cortex. And in fact, these fibers project to the primary visual cortex that is superior to the calcarine fissure here. Now, for the fibers from the lower part of the retina, and remember, they have the information from the upper visual field. Their way to the cortex is blocked by the inferior horn of the lateral ventricle. They're going to have to swing around that inferior horn, like this, to reach the primary visual cortex. And note that these fibers containing information about the upper visual field project to the primary visual cortex that is inferior to the calcarine sulcus here. This part here, where the fibers swing around the inferior horn of the lateral ventricle, is called Mayer's loop. This is important clinically because a lesion in the temporal lobe can lead to a visual field deficit in the upper visual field. Now let's have a look at the visual pathway in the brain. Here we're looking at an inferior view of the brain. These are the optic nerves. This is the optic chiasm. This is the optic tract traveling to the lateral geniculate nucleus. That's this little bump here on the thalamus, which is part of the diencephalon. Here's the occipital lobe. And here's the calcarine sulcus. And that's the primary visual cortex. Here's the inferior part. And here's the superior part. Now watch the optic radiations. Here's the lateral geniculate nucleus. And they're going to swing anteriorly around the inferior horn of the lateral ventricle. And then they're going to project back to the primary visual cortex. And you can see that they project to the part of the primary visual cortex that is inferior to the calcarine sulcus. These fibers here, as they swing around that inferior horn, are called Mayer's loop. In this specimen, we have dissected away the lateral parts of the cortex. This is anterior, and this is posterior. This is where the lateral geniculate nucleus is. And here are the optic radiations projecting to the primary visual cortex in the occipital lobe. And note that these optic radiations go to the part of the primary visual cortex that is superior to the calcarine sulcus. We have taken the image to the primary visual cortex. Remember, the image is reversed and inverted. So how do we make sense of this? 
from the primary visual cortex, fibers will go in a dorsal stream from the occipital lobe to the parietal and frontal association areas. This will tell us where things are and how they are. A ventral stream will go from the occipital cortex to the temporal association areas. This will tell us the what, or object recognition. As you can appreciate, the visual system is a complex system that has evolved to accommodate binocular vision and can sort the visual field to the respective cerebral hemispheres. From here, widespread areas of the cortex are engaged to make sense of the visual world around us.